Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. We're just outside the workshop today working on the sawmill. And this is my homemade sawmill that I made. And I've got a big log of uh, cedar on there, or cant of cedar, I guess you'd call it at this point. I've squared it up, and my goal for today was to just see how well my new saw blades, uh, well, I should say my resharpened saw blades work. I uh, converted my chainsaw sharpener into a sawmill uh, blade sharpener, and it seems to work really good. I've, I've uh, sawed the cant with that already off camera. So we're going to cut some boards off this now and uh, see how that goes. First thing I'm going to do is tighten up the blade. I loosen it up whenever I'm done. Well, I don't know why it died on me. I uh, really don't. I, it's, it's really never ever died like that before unless it was out of fuel, and it's not out of fuel. So, I don't know. Wouldn't you know, just because you're on camera, it has to do something like that. But you can see these are beautiful boards that it's cutting out of there. There's a little bit of wane on this one, but that's okay. The rest of them will be real clear for a long ways. These are gonna be siding on my new water wheel house. So I'll put this out of the sun. Ordinarily I don't turn the mill off uh, just for one cut like that, but I thought I would in this case to try to explain what happened with the motor. I just don't know why it died like that. It usually doesn't do that. We're going to drop it down uh, 7 eighths of an inch again, which will give me a 3 quarter inch board.
Got another great board out of it there. Really fine board. Just We ought to be able to get one more out of that. Well, that gave me one more real good board with a little bit of wane. I can always cut it down a little bit if I need to, but that's not bad. I can tell you right now, that's pretty good. And then this last board is mostly good. It's not as good. It's a hair thicker, only a hair thicker. And, you know, again, it can be cut down and used uh, for a good one by for sure. Maybe not for the same siding, but it's pretty good. Well, my friends, we're about to cut a hackberry tree. I've never cut a hackberry before. Uh, I cut the tree down live, believe it or not. It's been laying in log form for a couple years now. And it's got, you know, the bark's falling off of it. But you can see the unusual kind of bark it has. Very unusual kind of bark. So I don't know what to expect out of this. But it's been laying here, so it's time to get her cut up. First thing I got to do is secure it. Unfortunately, it's got a big stick out right here. I probably need to turn it over, I would imagine, at least on this first cut. Though it's so heavy, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to find a way to live with it. This is pretty heavy. I think that'll probably be solid enough. It's kind of cutting at an angle, but that's okay. I don't care about that part. All right, let's try it and see what happens. Uh, I don't know if I'm high enough yet or not. I'm probably high enough, but... I'd rather be a little too high on the first cut than too low. Well, I'm going to have to adjust this some more. I can tell I'm, because of that Y thing, I've got this cocked way over here. So I'm going to have to pull this over some more yet. I can tell.
probably tighten that up a little bit more just because we'll get the water flowing and we'll try it again well I gotta go I'm gonna drop it down I'm gonna drop it down a full inch Okay, boy, it looks like some really pretty wood, actually. I'm kind of surprised how pretty. So I'll get some uh, water and clean this off and uh, show you how pretty the wood is. First off, I'll sweep the sawdust off. Oh, it's really pretty. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't think it would look like this. And now I'll just pour a little bit of this water on here. And I'll just take this and smear the water around. Very pretty. Very pretty. So let me show you what that looks like. Can you see it? Just really beautiful wood. A little bit of this dark line spalting like maple gets, but look at the fine grain lines and the waviness and the, it's just beautiful. It's really prettier than I would have expected. So now I'm going to turn this over and flatten off the other side. Okay, I cleaned off some of the bark on this thing. I flipped it over, cleaned off the bark, got her sitting there pretty solid, dropped it down an inch. We're going to take a pass and see what happens.
I'll show you what this looks like because you know actually maybe I'll wait till the next pass although it looks pretty nice this way too make a great charcuterie board this thing would be beautiful as a charcuterie board yeah it's really nice um, well let me just show it to you what the heck you know I don't have it wetted down but even not wetted down, I think you can see there's a lot of things going on there. It's pretty wood. Very twisty, curly looking. It would be beautiful under stain, as I'm sure you can imagine. I'm going to take full one-inch boards each time. Well, I'm taking one-inch cuts. That actually is a seven-eighths inch board. I think because this is, uh, you know, uh, a unique board, I don't see any reason to try to saw it into regular lumber. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as, uh, like, charcuterie board type stuff. And uh, I think it can be very beautiful. That'll give you some idea of what's on the inside there. The other one kind of matches that. It's uh, pretty tough for the saw to saw through that big wide board up there. That's, you know, pretty wide actually. Don't know precisely how wide, but here we're cutting through 22 inches wide, which for this little saw is pretty good. I think I'm gonna drop it an inch and an eighth uh, because this will be one of the prime boards. That'll be a full inch board then when we're done.
that's that's pretty darn nice right there. I think I'll clean this one off and let you see it. Maybe we'll pull this back out of the way first. Yeah, I know Matt Cremona just throws it on there, but that's not how I do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, take a look at that. That is really pretty wood. I never knew it would look like that. I never had seen the inside of a hackberry before, I don't think. Nothing crazy great. You know, I've seen better wood, but on the other hand, it ain't bad. It's pretty nice. So I'm pretty happy with that. My daughters will be fighting over it for charcuterie boards. Well, I don't think I'm gonna film any more of it. I'll show you the final product when we're done. Thought I'd show you what the final two boards look like. They're just absolutely beautiful. Very pretty boards. And you can see there, they're just beautiful all the way up and down. This was a beautiful tree. It was down by the creek, but unfortunately it was right in the path of our Wi-Fi going up to our bed and breakfast. So it was just, it just had to go. And uh, at least we didn't waste it. We were going to make beautiful something out of this. Well, my friends, I spent the biggest part of the afternoon sawing up uh, the last couple of logs I had. One of them was this hackberry, and I thought I'd just show it to you. Uh, the lighting's not the best in here, but I have a feeling there's some colors in there that I can't see. It kind of looks like it would be colorful, but I uh, I mostly just see kind of like braids, uh, browns and grays or something. But, but anyway, uh, it's got some beautiful grain in it, you can see there, and uh, this will make some beautiful charcuterie boards. Here's some more of what it looks like when it's not wet. Uh, those there, of course, I wet down, but uh, it's still real nice stuff. I'm glad we saved it. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I hope you'll give me a great big thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, how about doing that as well? And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you so much. Beep, beep.